so our patients are not that much stable that we can we can shift their them to a uh, radiology so it is always better to go ahead for a card uh, eco bedside eco is always a time saving concept uh, in er so it's always important to go ahead for a bedside eco you can see the heart yeah i'm sorry it's again my cursor yeah so here is the heart okay and here is a sac we can see okay and this place where there is blackening we can see is your blood that means pericardial tamponade is there okay so in these patients we can see in this what is there this is right atrial collapse bhi ho gaya hai aapka la collapse is also there ventricular collapse is there underfilling of lv is there that means the lv if there is underfilling is there then the uh, uh, blood will not go much flow of the oxygen will not be there to the tissues by doing this now we have to release this pressure if we will be able to release this pressure from here if we will be able to release some pressure from here so then the uh, the uh, heart can again inflate okay and there will be uh, the filling of the uh, blood will be there so in these patients what we do is we do uh, pericardiosynthesis so now initially people used to say that it is okay to go blind and everything so but nowadays it is always important to go ahead in an uh, ultrasound guided uh, pericardiosynthesis as this will help uh, the injury to the heart or to the lung because the heart is in in the back of the uh, lung okay now first of all what we can uh, what we do is universal precaution which has to be there for every patient okay make the patient lie down comfortably in a supine position okay now we can take a large bore cannula for these patients to go ahead for a pericardiosynthesis or if you have a bigger needle as large as you have you can take that uh, now identify the maximum fusion point with an ultrasound okay because that is going to be your perfect place to pierce the uh, pericardial sac okay so sterile preparation you have done in inject the local anesthesia over the place the places that we are uh, adequate i'm going to uh, tell you on the next slide okay uh, by the methods which you can do pericardial synthesis so the uh, preferable one is always a subxiphoid uh, view and here we can see the subxiphoid view uh, in this ultrasound point of care uh, then uh, over the uh, just below to the xiphoid process so inject the local anesthesia then you can guide the needle with the help of an ultrasound okay if you have ever got done any uh, procedure like central line through the uh, ultrasound guided so you'll be able to appreciate the needle uh, in this it needs an expertise definitely for doing uh, pericardiosynthesis or any uh, process procedure uh, through usg guided so uh, by inserting uh, the needle in by the uh, ultrasound guided you can uh, collect the fluid in uh, diag for diagnostic testing okay you can remove the catheter after uh, removing a particular amount like if the collection is there you have seen in an ultrasound if there is a uh, you have already taken out good quantity of uh, blood like you have taken out 200 ml of quantity of blood so you can uh, uh, stop after that and do contact to your ctvs because this patient will be requiring an operative intervention later okay because it doesn't mean that if you have uh, excrete out the blood once that doesn't mean that it will not accumulate again because there is some injury to the heart which is causing the blood to accumulate in that particular area and requires an operative intervention later to heal out that okay so now there are three approaches we have there okay one as i have told you subxiphoid okay and a lateral and an apex view okay so now there is this uh, subxiphoid view what we do we uh, point the ultrasound over the uh, xiphoid press process okay now uh, pointing towards the left side of the shoulder the probe has to be pointed towards the left side of the chest okay 
now once we have entered uh, seeing here as in this picture we can see that we are pointing here and this is the heart this is your heart this is your pericardial sac this is your cavity which is filled up with blood you insert it through the ultrasound uh, probe okay once you enter you can see the uh, needle tip of the needle once you have entered here try to take out the blood okay and this is the under the xiphoid process so now the next uh, and the risk involved is the liver in these patients because here is the lying down what here is your liver which is there right mainly so now uh, in this view what we do we put the uh, probe the ultrasound probe over the third fourth intercostal space okay we uh, see that yes here we have seen the probe is here okay we can see here we can see the uh, blood so once we have entered the needle into this exc excrete it uh, excrete the blood out okay uh, and again inform the ctvs surgeon so here in this the risk is more okay here we see that the risk is only lipo which is mainly involved okay here we see the list uh, the risk is major arteries okay so we try to avoid that okay then uh, we have uh, the apical view which is there okay by this we can uh, point the uh, transverse uh, the uh, eco probe over the uh, apex unit uh, then we can see that the uh, pericardial sac is filled with blood then we again going to excrete it out now in this part why uh, we are curious because in this the lung is there okay uh, so we have to uh, make sure that the lung is on a safer place so when we when we say that it's 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 important to go ahead for it's important to use the probe as we by using the ultrasound we can save all the major organs okay like our liver in this this is the safest side to go ahead the subsequent view as the liver is at rest okay and these are the major components that we have the liver we can save by doing an ultrasound guided pericardial synthesis so now the major arteries which are there which get uh, hampered in an aortic in any trauma so now there is one question firstly i want to take that then we'll further move on to aortic di uh, dissection or the aortic rupture so now uh, during chest tube placement do you prefer using trocar chest tube or without trocar if there are adhesions which will you do while placing uh, chest tubes okay so mainly the chest tubes it is always and always preferred without trocar okay because one uh, when you when you are you using the trocar uh, chest tubes there can be a possibility that you can even uh, injure the lungs when you are using without trocar the, the chances of the lung injury is less as compared to the trocar chest tube even if you do have an adhesions as in the uh, picture also we have seen always clear out with the finger okay first insert your finger and try to rotate it at that time you can even remove the adhesions which are there uh, at that time okay and uh, do you uh, negative pressure on chest tubes if there is pneumothorax with air leak and i'm not understanding your uh, question at this point of time uh, dr arun because i don't understand the meaning of air leak i mean if you are saying are you saying that uh, if there is even uh, an open pneumothorax or something like that can you just reframe your question for me bpf sorry uh i'm sorry i'm not able to understand this 
bronchi uh, pleural uh, fistulas so in these patients uh, see it is always important uh, as an uh, emergency physician we do uh, take a surgery uh, call on these patients if we do suspect all these kind of a thing okay uh, it's always important to take expert advice in these scenarios if you do have any uh, uh, complications along with that definitely you should take a surgery call on that part so we don't uh, take call on that part ideally in any uh, pneumothorax we connected with a negative seal if there is any exceptional thing which is there then we do take a surgery call on that part so i would if you are an emergency physician i do advise uh, that not taking a call by yourself because again if you uh, uh, not if you are not going to connect it with a, a negative suction that you are making an open pneumothorax for the patient right because if you're not connected you are saying that if you can avoid connecting to the negative pressure then there is no point of putting a chest tube right then you are doing even harm to the patient so uh, let's come on the another topic traumatic aortic rupture so now in these uh, what happens uh, the when there is an impact to the heart there can be a possibility to impact on the arteries as well or the aortic arch as well so the heart basically aorta if we say the, the anatomical uh, position is mainly the heart is connected to the aorta the aorta is the one majorly which is supplying the over the uh, whole body okay so if uh, enough motion is placed on the heart that that uh, that i have said trauma to the heart it can injure the aorta as well so the uh, the chances of survival are very less in these patients okay if there is any mild trauma to the patient as there is uh, layers of the uh, aorta as well if there is a complete tear of the aorta then the chances of the survival of the patient is very very less and the uh, patient collapses in seconds okay so it is always important to identify it on time so now what can be the signs and symptoms the signs and symptoms are the only uh, thing which can help you out in these patients there there will be patient will be complaining of severe tearing chest pain and which is between the shoulder blades as well the patient will be saying that i feel that my chest is just going to burst because of the pain it's it's very stretchy pain my uh, and it is going on the back as well so in these patients what you see that the rapid uh, drop in the blood pressure will be there there will be pulse uh, tachycardia will be there but there will be uh, uh, this radio radial delay or uh, you can see the arterial delay will be there if you palpate both the radials at once then you can see the uh, decrease in one side uh, of the pulse pressure in the other one that we say that the radio radial delay is there that uh, uh, the decrease or loss of pulse or blood pressure on the left side compared to the right side okay if there is uh, obviously if there is a pulse delay then there will be a blood pressure delay as well in their in these patients the blood pressure will be low in these patients on that side so there will be a rapid loss of consciousness because of the hemodynamic instability of the patient so how you can deal with this patient so in a uh, uh, emergency what we can do again abc give high flow of oxygen patient will be in shock try to uh, manage this shock by giving uh, fluid to these patients these patients will be requiring blood transfusions as well and a ctvs call as soon as possible because in an emergency overall these patients will require uh, operative intervention as soon as possible because we can manage only conservatively not more than that okay so call up the ctvs surgeon shift the patient for an or as soon as possible uh, as you will give blood you will give fluid to the patients you will start on inner drops but still the management will be done by the ctbs surgeon in these patients